The Wilderness Within You. Day 11 of Lent, which is the Saturday of week 2. We've got several readings from the Bible. First from Luke 3, 15 to 17 from the NIV. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptise you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then from Luke 12, verse 49, again NIV. I have come to bring fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. Then John 21, verses 7 to 12 from the NIV. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore, about a hundred metres. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you've just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. And it was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. And Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. So, I have everything stacked perfectly in the wood stove. At either end, upright in the bed of last night's ashes, I've stood a solid hardwood log. Two sentinels, stalwart, they guard the mound in the middle. Scrunched paper under a wigwam of short kindling slats, softwood mainly. Then across the top, longer kindling slats balanced from log to log with two chunky bits of short split wood topping it all off, ready to fall through burning into the middle and become the basis for the fire once the paper and the kindling's all gone. What could possibly go wrong? Only it won't light. Three matches later, and I'm starting to feel embarrassed. The wood is dry. The paper is the kind that catches well. I've stacked it carefully. What's the problem? I think, he ventures humbly, you might have packed it too tight. On the subject of fires, I do have to respect his observations. Thirty days and nights in the wilderness must have honed a few skills in igniting damp wood. And I've read the story of his disciples coming in at first light after a night's fishing to find him with a cook fire going in readiness on the shore. Anyone who can build a successful campfire despite a stiff sea breeze in a resurrection body that can also walk through walls has surely got it sussed. So I bow to his superior knowledge, increasing the aperture at the front of my wood wigwam moving that nice little piece of kindling to a place where the first flames will reach it, 
because it's good and dry, half burnt now, and should take easily. And this time I succeed. As it's pouring with rain outside, we spend the morning fire watching through the window of the wood stove. Wilderness viewing. It takes a while to get that fire just right. At one point, the material forming the centre starter has burnt low, so I add another good big log end on in the middle. But it and the sentinels are no more than glowing, and the chunky bits I balanced on top hasn't, hadn't fallen through as I'd hoped, but stayed balanced, teetering on the edge of the sentinel tops. He suggests I might knock them down with the poker to fill the gaps between the sentinels and the middle log. And I do this. Once there is that contact, the fire finally takes hold and we can relax. Fires, he observes, are all about bridges and spaces. If you want a fire to catch, you need both. Things have to be so set up that there's something in place as a bridge to carry the flame from one to the next, but leaving spaces so the fire can breathe and the flame is not suffocated. I know him well enough by this time to grasp that he is and is not discussing wood flame and newspaper. He means people. He means Holy Spirit. He means souls. This is the man who came to set the whole world ablaze. He knows how to start a fire. Time in the press and throng of the community, teaching, healing, listening, loving and time up in the hills, out in the wilderness, alone with God. Sitting silently, watching the flames move along the logs now touching, I think of the bridge he made, the crossing place, the wood they nailed him to, that joined up heaven and earth, that let the fire of love travel through to ignite, ignite such a blaze as 2,000 years has not extinguished. It exposed a world choked with sin to the oxygen of heaven, that bridge of rough wood. They hammered in the nails through his wrists and his feet while the cross lay still in the dust of the earth. Then they hoisted it high, its foot in a socket of earth and the top of it in heaven, crossing the gap with him nailed to the wood. No other way could the fire break be bridged. I'll go. I'll do it. Yes. He knows about fire.